Good. We are look, looking at course volume profit analysis, a work example prepared and presented by Mr. James. Okay, the problem, the question is the first part, part E, list five assumptions of break even analysis for five marks, and part two of part E. State why each of the assumptions you have stated in I above may not always be true. And you have 10 marks for that. Okay, here we have a copy of the answers on your screen there. The first one is total costs may be classified into fixed and variable costs. Okay. And um, the answer to the second part in response to that is some costs are likely to be semi variable costs. Okay. Next, I the cost and revenue functions remain linear that is on a graph they would be straight lines and the part two to it is cost and revenue functions may take other forms for example uh, it may take the form of a curve as we have it in economics three the price of the product is assumed to be constant. And this is most unlikely to be so. The price of the product may change during the relevant range of the product. And but for I, the volume of sales and volume of production are equal. In other words, what they're saying there is there's no opening or closing stock. And this is most unlikely. Instead, there's more likely to be an opening and closing inventory. And for F5, your fifth, the fixed costs remain constant over the volume under consideration. And the objection to that is fixed costs are more likely to be stepped. Okay? You consult your textbook, I think chapter seven, you should get some more depth into that. But that would, for one mark each point, that is about sufficient there. But part B, for part B, we look at the questions first. Right, they ask us to calculate the break even point in units, then the break even point in dollars, the margin of safety in units, and the margin of safety in dollars. You got three marks for each one of those. So, in all, this part of the topic would have given us. Twenty two marks. Do you have the data here? Macintosh Limited makes one product and its factory has the capacity to produce two hundred thousand units of that product for a year. The budgeted income statement for the next year is as follows, and we are given the figures here. It's not Okay. Macintosh Limited makes one product and its factory has the capacity to produce 200,000 units of that product for a year. The budgeted income statement for the next year is as follows. Sales, we have 150,000 units by $75 equal 11,250,000. 
then we are given the expenses direct materials 2 million 250000 direct wages 3 million production overhead degree variable portion is 300000 and fix 1 million 250000 and the distribution overhead variable 900000 fix 500000 Okay, so we have the production force up here and the other admin and selling distribution and so on down here. So we lump all together. So it's not really in the form of a marginal cost in statement. So one of the, the ways you could approach this problem is to arrange the figures into a marginal cost in statement or um, contribution margin statement but since the question did not ask for that we can very easily do it using the equations and the course functions that we learned yesterday okay which is what i did here so um First, we compute the variable cost by adding all the variable costs together. Notice I have added up these here workings. And when we get into the answer, um, I'm working on the answer, I have that separate. Okay, so the variable costs we add all together, and we get 6,450,000. The variable cost per unit then would be that this figure here over 150,000, which is equal to 43. And the contribution per unit would be the selling price of $75 minus the 43. And we'll get 32 as contribution, $32. Okay, so the formula for the Break even point in units is the fixed cost, which is this amount, plus this. This is the production only. Um, if we take a look back at the data, we will see that. Okay, the fixed cost here, they don't have any up here, direct fixed cost, but you have a um, the fixed production overhead, and then you have the fixed distribution overhead. So that's where we get those two figures from. Add them, and we divide it by the contribution for unit. We will get approximately 54,688 units. All right, it's a rounded figure. Um, You're allowed to round them off because usually you are working in estimates when these, when you're doing manufacture, sorry, uh, managerial accounting. Okay, the second part asks for breaking point in dollars, right? We can just take this figure. Um, I didn't round it here and multiply by $75, which is equal to, this is the selling price, right? And we'll get the break even point in dollars. Or oh, another way of doing that, which would have taken longer, would have been to take the, the 43 and express it as, sorry, 32, and express it as a percentage of the 75. Then divide the uh, fixed cost by that percentage. Okay, but this is a simpler thing. You just multiply the, the breaking points, breaking units by the selling price, and you get that. You don't need to get fancy. Okay, the margin of safety in units. Your 150,000 that you are producing and selling minus the break even point in units, we get 95,312.
units. Again, you don't need to get fancy. Uh, use uh, the formula there. It's a simple calculation. Margin of safety in dollars. You take the 95, 312, and multiply it by $75, and you get this here. 